Example number two. A block with a mass of two kilograms is held against a spring with a spring constant of 250 newtons per meter. The block compresses the spring 22 centimeters from its equilibrium position. After the block is released, it travels along a frictionless surface, then up a frictionless ramp, and the ramp's angle of inclination, so that's just the angle in the ramp, is 30 degrees. Determine the elastic potential energy stored in the spring before the mass is released. So what's happening is we have this spring here, and we squish this back, and when we let it go, the mass is going to be released. Once it's completely uncompressed, all the energy is actually kinetic. And then it's going to start traveling up this ramp, and all that kinetic energy is slowly being transformed into gravitational potential energy. So let's start by writing down what we know. So we know that the mass is 2 kilograms. We know K is 250 newtons per meter. We know the compression is 0.22 centimeters or 0.22 meters. 22 centimeters from its equilibrium position. After the block is released, it travels. And we know that the angle here is actually 30 degrees. We want to find the elastic potential energy stored in the spring before the mass was released. So I'm looking for EE. Well, the formula for EE is simple. So the elastic potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared. Plug in everything that you know. So my calculator, I'm going to go 1 half times 250 times 0.22 squared, and I end up with 6.05 joules. I need to round this to two significant digits, so I would just round it to 6.1. So we've compressed the block, and then when it's released, it uncompresses and all the elastic energy gets changed into kinetic energy. So the question says, calculate the speed of the block as it travels along the horizontal surface. So we're looking for the speed. So I know that all the elastic potential energy got converted into kinetic energy, and the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. If I want to get v all by itself, first thing I do is I'm going to multiply by 2, then I'm going to divide by m, and then take the square root. So v is equal to the square root of 2ek divided by m. We plug in what we know, so it'll be the square root of 2 times. Now, when I look back here, you don't take the rounded answer, you take the more accurate one, 6.05. And our mass was 2. And when you put all that into your calculator, you end up with 2.46. We're going to round that to 2.5 meters per second. determine how far along the ramp the block will actually travel before it stops. So when it stops, all that originally elastic energy, which got changed into kinetic energy, has now changed into gravitational potential energy. So I know that EG is equal to that original elastic potential energy. So the formula for EG is just MGH. That's equal to my elastic. We're trying to get H all by itself, so divide both sides by mg. Mg's cancel. So H is equal to the elastic energy divided by mg. We plug our numbers in, so 6.05 is what I calculated earlier. The mass was 2, g is 9.8, and I end up with 0 0.3 meters. Now, that's a height straight up. I don't want the height straight up. I actually want how far along the ramp it's actually going to travel. So when I think about this, here's my ramp. Here's my right angle. 
this is 30 degrees, this height is 0.3, I'm looking for this distance. Well, I just go back to basic trig. I know I'm looking for the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. That's the opposite. So I'm simply just going to use sine. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. To get hypotenuse out of the bottom, I'm going to multiply both sides by h, and then I'm going to divide both sides by sine theta. So I end up with h is equal to O over sine theta. Put in my numbers. My opposite I calculated to be 0.3 divide by sine 30 degrees, and I end up with 0.60 meters.